Yeah, thanks for joining us again, everyone. And uh, Tim, great to see you this year. Looking forward to speaking with you and catching up with you more. So, um, but I'll start off just uh, quickly, obviously, the terrible news uh, in the Canadian University football community. And um, it's hit our program pretty hard as, you know, um, young guy from, you know, not too far away and easily could have been a Queens football player. That's for sure. You know, uh, academic, all Canadian mechanical engineering student, tremendous young man. So we're saddened, um, you know, our team's well aware and uh, we're going to pay tribute on game day. Uh, you know, we've coordinated something with the University of Ottawa uh, football staff and um, Anthony Federico, uh, number 99 on our team, will be wearing an alternate uh, number uh, out of respect this week. So obviously sad news and we're just going to stick together as a, as a league and as a community. So we wish Ottawa the best in terms of how they're, you know, dealing with this. No one should have to go through something like that. So it's pretty sad stuff. Thanks, Steve. Um, I think I'll just run down the list of reporters um, rather than use the raise hand function. So I'll start with um, Ian McAlpine. Ian, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask Steve now. Can you hear me? Yep. <clears throat> Okay, can you hear me now? Sorry, I'm uh, having technical issues here. You're good, Ian. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm just happy to see the great Tim Cunningham has joined us. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so uh, yeah, Steve, that's tough news. Uh, how does that get in? Does that kind of news get into the head of a university age player to know that, uh, you know, life is so short? Yeah, you know what? I, yeah, I, you know what I, I don't think I can don't really comment really on that, on that, 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 you know, that, you know it's made an impact made on everyone, I think. Um, you know, football is a sacred game, and life is obviously a uh, Yeah, just, yeah, just try to deal with this stuff the best you can. And, certainly, you know, pretty special game, a pretty special time of your life as a player. So you don't want to take any more So to, to, um, to change, uh, change subject slightly, um, after a season opening win, which it must have been good for your uh, team's confidence, uh, how was your how was your week of practice uh, moving into the, t uh, the game on Saturday? Yeah, so yeah. you know it's a standard week for us. Um, you know, we had Monday as a prep day and a strength and conditioning day and academic day for the student athletes, so we didn't practice on Monday, and then we were back at it Tuesday. Um, very good practice, high energy, great excitement, great energy around uh, the entire the entire practice from just about every athlete out there and you know, every coach as well. And then last night uh, was a solid practice, but, you know, execution um, could, could have been a lot better. You know, we, we were, you know, working on some new things, new situations and whatnot, and uh, it's not as crisp as we would have liked it. So we're looking for a great rebound tonight and uh, one of the best practices, if not the best practice of the year tonight. How are you approaching uh, uh, Ottawa Gigi's? What do they What do they have that uh, you need to uh, worry about? Yeah, a lot of good yeah, football lot of good players, players as usual. You know, it's a great it's area for football. And, uh, yeah. They've done a tremendous yeah. job. Yeah. job yeah. In that area, yeah. 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 bring Sage up players in yeah. Quebec. So you know, a lot of talented yeah. athletes. Yeah. Big on the defensive line. You know, good offensive yeah. line. Uh, talented yeah. quarterback yeah. and a receiver to make a big impact. Or did so in week one. He presents a threat as well. But, you know, they've got some athletes in the second year as well. Very experienced free safety and uh, and some and some good linebackers. So, you know, physical big linebackers. So they're one of those teams where, you know, you, you wonder what happened week one. I just don't think they put it together as well as they could have. Um, but I'm sure that they'll be a much improved football team. They're, they're really well coached and, um, you know, have, have very talented football players and certainly will be emotionally charged. Great. Well, thanks very much. Thanks, Ian. Um, and if I can just remind everybody to mute themselves um, when they're not asking a question, uh, just for better audio. So I'll move down now to Jack Burnham. Jack, if you have a question, uh, you're Thank good you. to go. Thank you. Uh, so I, I have two questions. So one is uh, Gabe uh, Boucher going to return to the lineup this week? Is so That's my first one. Yeah, Gabe, Gabe left the Carlton game there um, with, a, with an upper body injury. So um, he's still working through his process, and um, that'll be something that, you know, is uh, more of a game time decision for us. And then my second one is, how do you think the team feels about 
being back home, you know, for the first time this season, being in Richardson. Yeah, I, I think everybody's really excited. Um, again, you know, we still got a big night tonight of meetings and practice and uh, some more stuff tomorrow as well. So we're still quite a ways away in terms of preparation. But, I mean, you can already, you know, feel the energy buzzing. Um, I believe we may be sold out already with our reduced capacity. So, you know, it, it should be an exciting environment. Uh, thanks, Jack. Um, if you have no further questions, I'll move down now to Jesse Bell. Jesse, if you have some questions, uh, please ask Steve now. Perfect. Thanks so much. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep, you're good, Jesse. Wonderful. Coach Snyder, congrats on the week one win. Uh, there were some obvious standout performances, of course, Anthony Federico winning OUA Defensive Player of the Week. But who were some of the unsung heroes from that week one win? Keegan Vanek uh, played really well, you know, number of tackles on special teams, pass breakup, you know, just played really well on defense there for, for essentially a first year guy, you know, last year was his first year and obviously we didn't have a season. So he had a tremendous week one, um, you know, just really looked like a, a guy that was very comfortable playing at this level. Um, and then Ashton Miller Melanson as well, um, playing a little bit, you know, at a position to an extent, but this may be his new position. You know, he was at the boundary corner spot and, Another, you know, just tremendous game there. Uh, and and um, and then Evan Florin on our offensive line, you know, one of our uh, one of our offensive guards, you know, was was uh, very strong performance, you know, and that's something that certainly goes on some, you know, to the to the just average fan watching the game. You, you, you don't it's tough to pick up on offensive line performance, you know, from an individual perspective. But Evan Evan played really well. And I thought James Keenan, our quarterback, did a good job. You know, nothing uh, extraordinary. Um, you know, really well thrown deep ball to Richard Burton for a touchdown, um, but just managed it well, used his feet well, uh, did a really good job. And that ties into my final question for today. Uh, where have you seen the most improvement with the team compared to 2019? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the offensive line, first and foremost, I think is further ahead and, and there's tremendous improvement there. Um, and then, uh, you know, the defensive secondary right now, I think, is an improved unit from 2019 as well. So those are two areas that jump out to me, but the offensive line being the main one, I just think we're much further ahead right now than we were certainly this time in 2019, but even at the end of the year in 2019. Perfect. Thanks so much, coach. Looking forward to the game Saturday. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, next up is Tim Cunningham. Tim, if you have some questions, please ask them now. Hey, Steve. Nice to see you again. It's been a while. Um, was there any, given what uh, happened to Francis Perron, was there any talk of uh, postponing Saturday's game? From my understanding, I, I believe, you know, the University of Ottawa may, may have had the option there to, you know, to not play. Um, but it sounds like they're, they're moving forward. They want to play. And of course you do, you know, the best, a lot of, you know, I certainly don't want to speak on behalf of them, but you know, when something like this happens, sometimes the best thing to do is, you know, go out and play. And, um, let everybody do what they love to do. And, you know, the greatest way to honor a football player is playing really good football. So, you know, I think everybody's excited to get out on the field and just embrace the game. Given that uh, you didn't play last year and you don't have a lot of film on Ottawa U, uh, how, how is your preparation different now uh, than it was pre COVID? Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a little bit of a challenge. We have essentially one game uh, of them uh, in their current, you know, current roster, current coaching staff. So we've been breaking that down. Um, but then going back into the 2019 tape as well, like, um, you know, from a defensive standpoint, a special team standpoint, there's a lot of similarities, similar coaches or same, same coaches and a lot of, you know, the carryover from the roster. So breaking down our game against them in 2019, some of the games against opponents that run common systems to us from 2019, and then really taking a deep dive into the 2021 uh, week one game. And again, this is kind of a COVID question, given that you didn't play last year uh, on offense. I mean, I watched the game, uh, Saturday's game. It was a defensive battle in the first half. On offense, do you, do you limit the playbook just because you haven't played, uh, you, you missed a full season, or, um, or, or, or is it a wide open playbook? Yeah, in a sense, it's actually more wide open because we've had a lot of time to think and, you know, we've been getting ready all summer in terms of had access to the guys throughout the summer and been able to do a lot there. So, um, but we, we, so 
there's there's more available to us to an extent, but we, we got to dial it back a little bit because of how young we are. You know, we've got a, a number of receivers who have not really played significant playing time in their career. Um, you know, some new faces and whatnot. So uh, we've got to make sure we're not trying to do too much, you know, and make sure that everybody feels really comfortable with uh, a more of a, a scaled down game plan. And my final question, given that uh, training camp wasn't held in August and it was in September, how did, how do you, how did you adjust and, and specifically the adjustment for first year kids that are trying to balance orientation with trying to fit in with the, with a new team? Yeah. So a lot of our players reported in, in August and, and in July, and we were able to get out on the field and do stuff three days a week with them. So uh, we were able to kind of get people adjusted and acclimated and, and uh, throughout August have very similar style of practices, just non-padded and non-contact, but similar styles of practice that we would have, would, would have had during training camp. So that helped with the transition and the time off and, and whatnot. Um, but what we really lost was the true training camp of, you know, that stretch where it's just football all day. There's nothing else going on from 8 a.m. until 9 p.m. It's just football, football, football. We really only had a handful of days of that before classes started, and then we lose the guys for the day, you know, and they're out doing, um, you know, pursuing their degrees and working on campus and whatnot, and then they come to us in the evening. So that was a big difference for us, and that was an adjustment. But overall, our teams handled it really well. I thought, I think our, our program's done a great job of adjusting to COVID and making the most out of, you know, everything, you know, and just being fluid with things, rolling with the punches, but also thinking ahead and creating new, you know, um, plans to, to keep things uh, as efficient as possible. So, uh, you know, tough to get into details, but, you know, we've done a pretty good job with that and our players have, have jumped right in on it. That's great. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tim. Uh, and next up and last is Wayne Zanchetta. Wayne, if you have some questions, please fire away now. Perfect. Thank you, Coach. Uh, you talk about the lack of uh, game film for their offensive scheme. I'm just going to kind of piggyback off of one of Tim's questions. Uh, Coach Belfay was at Queens the year before you got there. Uh, does the defensive staff kind of have any similarities they've seen in last week's game compared to what he ran with the Gales in 2018? Yeah, absolutely. There, there's certainly, uh, you know, philosophy and, and similar, similar schemes there. So we've actually, it's a, it's a great question. You know, we've actually gone back to that uh, a little bit throughout, you know, the last few months as well in terms of getting ready for this game. Um, you know, back to practice tape from 2018, uh, back to game film offensively of Queens from 2018. And, you know, just get a feel for his style of football and what he likes to do and how, how he uses personnel and um, try to get a little bit of a head start on, on game planning. So that was certainly something that took place. And with a team that was predominantly passing attack last week, you guys obviously had a fantastic pass rush. Uh, how, what are you guys kind of keying in on this week without giving away too much uh, to kind of exploit their offensive line? Yeah, you know, matchups are big. You want to find great matchups on, on, in passing situations. And, um, you know, you, you got to get a feel for protection, where they're more likely to be, you know, man to man and where they're more likely to be in some type of slide and whatnot. And then, you know, attack that with, uh, with your blitz scheme or your pass rush scheme you know, especially in those situations where, you know, it's more of a heavy pass down. So, you know, that's the kind of stuff you got to do. And, uh, and then from a, you know, a technical standpoint, you just got to continue to develop pass rush throughout the week. So, you know, one-on-one -on -one pass rush, great individual technical work with our defensive line needs to continue to happen because it's a group that needs to improve drastically uh, in that area. So, um, you know, those are a couple of things that I think will, will help us in, in getting after the passer. And when you talked about Keegan Vanek, uh, the younger guys starting to make an impact, do you believe that the year off, uh, while it kind of sucked they didn't get game reps, has allowed you to kind of grow them more in your schemes and what you guys want to do off the field in the weight room and that kind of aspect? A little bit, yeah. We've been limited to weight room access, you know, since the pandemic. There's, there's been limited weight room access, and that's, that's affected a lot of programs, certainly ours, but... Um, you know, we like to look at the positive. So, yeah, to go back to last year, you know, we were able to get on the field a couple of days a week all fall uh, and work with the guys technically and introduce some systems. And there was no, you know, that that urgency of your hair being on fire, you're about to play in two days or something. It wasn't there. So you were able to just kind of keep a slower teaching tempo and uh, and bring every guy along. And that's certainly what took place in 
in 2020. So in some ways, you guys benefited from that. Um, and, you know, would they have benefited more from a traditional season? Quite possibly in, in other ways. But I thought this, you know, the format that we had in 2020 was a positive, you know, and, and the players did a great job with it. So one of the benefits, again, was in, just in terms of that urgency, you know, if it was a regular year, as you start to get into that dress roster and non-dress roster, as that starts to get sorted out, those non-dress roster guys don't get developed in your system as much. They actually spend a lot of time simulating the other team systems and whatnot. So not having that last year and having everybody just work our system and, and a lot of technical work as well, which you start to lose slightly as the season goes on. Um, we were able to stay committed to that in the fall and summer. So I, I think it, it has been a positive for those young guys. And then uh, just my last one, this game is obviously going to be highly emotional for not only Ottawa, but your team. Cause they, like you said, they've been dealing with the loss and, it's also their home opener the first time in two years. How do you as a coach go into the locker room pregame and kind of contain the emotion or do you even try to contain it at this point? Yeah, you definitely got to control it. That's a big part of football. And that was our motto, you know, our focus and our emphasis week one. That was our fallback was stay steady. You know, we wanted our team to not ride the emotional roller coaster week one, um, but just stay steady emotionally and play one play at a time. And our plays, players did that. Now, we didn't play particularly well, but we got the win. But in terms of emotionally, our team did a really good job of staying steady. So although that was the emphasis week one, that'll be something that we have to rely on every week moving forward. It's got to be a part of the foundation of who we are. So we'll, we're will we going to try to fall back on that as well week two is we got to stay steady and just kind of see the football and hear the football and, and nothing else uh, really matters on game day. You know, you got to block all that stuff out and really channel it in. So our focus this week has really been on the, the mental side of football, the, the, the smart football and um, just how much of a mental game it really is. And, and, and then, you know, we're going to continue to fall back on the stay steady where we emotionally just keep ourselves in check. Perfect. Thank you, coach. Good luck this weekend. Yeah, thanks. Thanks Wade. Um, I'll just leave it open. If anyone has any last minute questions for Steve before we, uh, before we wrap up, if you want to just jump in. Um, hey Steve, uh, Ian, one more time. Um, I'm just wondering about uh, how, how the home game is going to be different. Like, will it be like, uh, not out of your control, was there going to be the band there, cheerleaders, anything like that? Or is it just straight football that uh, we're going to see on uh, Saturday? Yeah, for the most part, it'll be a lot of straight football. Um, I think you have to kind of check in with, you know, our media department and, and the website and whatnot, uh, and any service announcements that go throughout, you know, the community and campus with regards to the details there. I certainly won't comment on it because my focus is more just football. But, uh, I, you know, it'll definitely be a little bit better, a little bit different environment uh, than we're, we're traditionally used to, you know, reduced capacity and uh, maybe not as many uh, – support systems in place and as many staff in place uh, you know and that's really you know, my knowledge of it but I think it'll still be a tremendous atmosphere and, uh, and a great return to football great thanks good luck on Saturday yeah thanks Ian